we're going to get started. So I want to say, start out by saying good evening, everybody, and welcome to Brackman's EMT program. Quick introduction, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, then I'm going to go around. I want to hear a little bit about each uh, one of you guys. Um, my name is David Bozer, clinical coordinator here, been here uh, almost four years. Paramedic firefighter for 28 years, retired January 1st, 2019 at Lehigh. I did my first 12 in New York City, came down in 2003, and the rest is history. So, spent uh, some time in Iraq as a medic in 2010, and uh, came back after fire departments rehired after all the, those big layoffs during the crash. So that's my history, so I want to hear about you guys. Um, my name's Chance, um, I'm 19 years old. Gotta hear you, gotta hear you, Chance. My name's Chance, I'm 19 years old. Um, I recently just graduated high school. Okay. I fire one in high school. Um, got my fire two, mm -hmm. and then um, I'm hoping to do EMP so I can finish it out, whether it be getting on as a, as a ambulance or anywhere in the hospital. Cool. That's my goal. My name's Colin, uh, previously corrections, previous law enforcement, uh, so I'm over four and a half years. Um, did uh, street cop work, I did undercover work, I've done task force work. Um, Why you want to do this? Get that kind of into the military because it still draws to me, but all that other stuff kind of keeps me from doing it. So, gotcha. All right. My name's Carlos. Uh, I'm 20, 26 years old, pretty sure. <laughs> um, okay. I work uh, for a dryer and cleaning company. Okay. I've been doing that for 10 years and I'm kind of ready to do something different. I used to. Uh, be a, a fire explorer with the need up for, for okay. a long time nice. and uh, and I really like doing it so uh, I'm actually right now in the process of getting my citizenship and so that's kind of what has kept me from being able to do this is not being a citizen so now that I'm getting close to it I'm trying to get it all done so that I can you know be able to hopefully apply and get hired somewhere nice excellent uh, my name is Michael. Uh, I was in the military, got medically retired from an injury on deployment. Okay. Uh, I have a wife and child. My daughter is two. I'm technically now I am certified as a firefighter in the state of Florida. I'm unfortunately retaking this class. And then I plan on doing paramedic and then finding a job somewhere along those times. Excellent. That's the golden ticket, right? Fire service after you become an EMT, paramedic. Speaking of which, I don't, I don't know if you'll know, but uh, I know that there's like three medic classes that run here, and like, and they end and start obviously at different times or something yes. like that. So yes. it's a clinic. Every three months, there's a new medical class okay. starting. There's three a year. Okay, so with that being said, I know one starts this month. Yes. This class, EMT, won't be over until I assume like April. So I would miss the second medic class starting as well. You can. You have to finish your EMT class first. Once you finish your EMT class, you can start the medic program, but you have until the midterm to pass the national EMT course. So you can actually start the medic class, but you have to be an EMT before the midterm. No, what I'm saying is, you said it's every three months? It's three to four months. I have to look at the schedule. Okay, because okay. that would put me like a month shy, because it would start that's something we have to look at the dates. Okay, okay. Th that's what I was asking. All right, thank you. So basically what we're gonna to do tonight is I'm gonna discuss clinicals and FISDAP. FISDAP is where you're going to enter all your information that you do on ride times and in the ER, which is very important. This is where we're going to learn how to act as an EMT in the field, okay? courtesy, how to treat patients, how to treat people, work as a team player. So, 
basically, here we go. I want to introduce you, introduce you to the staff. We have the president and chief medical officer, Dr. Gandia, which you will see he comes out every once in a while. Same doing with Bill McGrath, VP of academics. He runs the school that's on the East Coast. You all know Richard, right? Pam, you will meet real soon. She's the program director. That is me, I'm your clinical coordinator, and Cassandra takes care of admissions and reception right now. So any issues that you may have on the administrative side, or bund, Cassandra is your go-to girl, okay? All right, we're gonna have Cliff, he's gonna be a paramedic and EMT instructor. Elaine takes care of the days. Ariel, Phil, and you've met Camilo. So these are the people you would be dealing with the most. Okay. We're going to talk about issues and everything else as further we go on. Paramilitary, EMS, fire, police department, paramilitaries. Everybody understands what paramilitary is, right? Packing water, military style, right? Okay, so we always go up the chain, down the chain. We don't skip above. If there's a problem in class, First person to go to is your lead instructor. If there's a problem on the clinical side, the next person your instructor will take it to me, and so on and so forth. Okay, that's how we're going to do things. Expectations. This is a big thing. This is a big thing because some students don't know what to do, how to act, where to go. This is what I'm here to teach you. What's going to go on during your rotations. Be in uniform, right? What you're wearing right now, pants, black shoes, boots, it's all good, all right? Clean cut, shaven, no facial piercings, pen paper, stethoscope. You're gonna have skill check off sheets and that's fine, okay? You're gonna be getting evaluation sheets. These are gonna be on the FISD app I was telling you about. You're gonna be able to print these out. Every time you do a clinical rotation, it's gonna be blank. You will fill out the top, your name, date, the department that you are at. You will also, at the bottom, have your preceptor, whoever it was, they will sign and date it. And they will fill out your evaluation. A little word to the wise. Don't lie, don't forge. That is, Big no no, it's, it's, a, it's a big thing, okay? It's illegal, number one, right? Two, that happens forging a doctor's nurse's signature, bye bye. Not gonna happen, okay? Your eval forms, if you have class, if you have a rotation on a Saturday and you have class on Monday, this eval form has to be in on Monday. You will have to do a patient care report for at least five patients in an ER when you do your ER rotation. Those have to be completed and uploaded by the next class. No ifs, ands, or buts. That's how it has to happen, okay? Because when you are working, when do you think your report is done? 24 hours have until the end of your shift to get it in right this is how we're gonna train you guys just like if you were in the field okay expectations here we go represent your school represent yourself every clinical ride time is a potential interview remember that I don't care you work Hendry County SL right still a small world everybody knows everybody I'm sure you know plenty of guys in Lee County SL right Everybody knows everybody, same thing in the fire service. They talk. Every ride time or clinical is a potential job interview, okay? Look good, represent yourself, represent the school, look good, look sharp, don't be a wallflower. We'll get into that. Okay, expectations when we're in the emergency department. When you are doing an ER clinical rotations, you will get there, you introduce yourself to the charge nurse. 
because as soon as you walk in, you'll see security guards. They're going to take you. Excuse me, I'm sir. I'm a student with Braxton College. I like to see the charge nurse. They will take you. You don't have to worry about getting picture IDs for Lee Health anymore with EMTs because you only do one or two rotations. That's it. You're going to go, introduce yourself, have a photo ID with you, your driver's license. They're going to give you a patch, a little sticker. They'll take you to the charge nurse. There you go. Be inquisitive. All right? Ask a lot of questions. It's the only way you're going to learn. Nobody's going to take you by the hand. Okay? Take the lead in certain circumstances. So a patient's getting discharged. You know, oh, the nurse needs, oh, man, i got to get set. Run in. Go get that last set of vital signs. It's a good way for you guys to practice. Okay? Don't be afraid to take a pulse. Okay? Don't worry about just sticking that pulse ox on and looking at the, at, at the machine. All right? Touch the patient. Put your gloves on. Okay. Always offer to help move the patients. All right. Offer to help anything. They will love you. Again, word gets around. This student was great. This student was not so great. Okay. Like I said, don't be a wallflower. Don't be that person that's gonna sit back like this. You have to have some sort of type A personality to do this job. Cop, firefighter, medic, whatever. Okay. EMTs you guys, EMT students, you cannot assist in aerosolizing procedures in the ER. Do you know what that means? No. Okay. When somebody is getting a treatment, like a breathing treatment, an asthmatic, where it's aerosolized, you've seen asthmatics use breathing treatments where that mist is popping off, you're not allowed in a room when they do that. You're not being fitted for an N95. When aerosolizing treatments go on, only people that were fitted for an N95 are allowed in the room. Medic students are. Nursing students are not. That's just how it is, okay? Okay, for ride times, for the ambulance, show up early. If the shift starts at 8 o'clock, don't show up at 7.59. That will not be a good impression. Ask for the station officer when you get there, the lieutenant, the commanding officer, whoever it is, the battalion chief, if you're working, if you ride Collier County EMS, that's the person you ask for. Assist in the truck checks, okay? Learn how to use the department's equipment because if you decide one day you work in Hendry County and the next shift you're gonna be working Collier County EMS, different trucks, different equipment, different setup, know what you're doing. Okay? If you don't know, ask. This is the biggest problem that we have. The younger ones are afraid to ask. You can't be afraid. You've got to step up. The more you step up, the more you apply yourself, the better it looks for you, the better it looks for the school, the better it looks for everybody. You know, like, the student was really good. I get phone calls, I get emails on students who were great. I also get emails on students who were not so great. And then I have to deal with that. And I don't 